Without further ado, it's time to move on to the compound men's team gold medal match. Denmark versus the USA. Exciting times for the USA here. They've flattered to deceive so far this season. But here they are going for gold in Paris up against a very strong Danish team. USA with World number two, Braden Galantine. World number three, Jamie Lutz. And world number five, Chris Schaff. Well, that's a strong team from Denmark as well. World number 11, Martin Damsbo. World number 20, Matthias Fullerton. And world number nine, Stefan Hansen. Uh, Nikki, we're going to come back on to Denmark and talk about their incredible, uh, the quality of their squad. But USA first up, first final of the year. First gold final, yeah. I mean, they got bronze in Guatemala. They got into the bronze match in Lausanne. They lost to Italy on a shoot-off, 29-29. Not the closest to the middle. So I think they're pretty hungry for this. Certainly are. And I wonder if uh, Chris Schaff, who looks like he's going to be shooting first for the USA, um, had a bit of forfeit here and wasn't allowed to shave his beard until they made the final. That is some facial accompaniments. So time for end number one of the gold medal match. And it's the pursuit Chris Schaff to get us underway. Yep. The unorthodox James Lutz, who we know, the puncher. Well, number two. 35-year-old Garantine putting it into the middle of the target. Stefan Hansen, the world number nine for Denmark. 26 years old. Looking for a promising start. Hits the 9-10 line for the 10. Makes a tiny adjustment. Better shot from Fullerton, who's just 18 years old. Damsbo with um, what looks to be a fairly bespoke blinker that he's got on his cap. Yeah, I think it's just to minimise what he can't see, maybe. Just on the line for Schaff. Jimmy Lutz not looking too happy. You call him a puncher, Nikki. What What do you mean? So consciously deciding, I am going to shoot now. And you use that trigger with your thumb. If you watch his thumb on the next shot, you can see the movement before yep. he makes the shot. Whereas most, not all, <laughs> prefer a more subconscious feeling. So a feeling of pushing and pulling and the shot breaking without them knowing, almost. Well... It's Lutz who's dropped the uh, two points in this end for the USA. Opportunity for Hansen, Fullerton and Damsbo to pull away early doors and a 10 
from Stefan Hansen is a good start to this second segment. Managing to get a one-point advantage when two were available, but you'd certainly want to be in Denmark's position in the lead. Uh, Jimmy Lutz, two nines. He seems to be, by the very, very high standards being set here today in Paris, the weak link. Yeah, you know, I'm a big believer in the subconscious release. Uh, that's the way I always shot um, and would coach others to do so. I think under the high pressure events like this, um, it just puts so much pressure on you because you're consciously having to think about making that release. And, you know, when you're in these pressure situations, other thoughts come to your brain, all sorts of things are going on in there. And, you know, uh, we haven't had these high pressure competitions for a long time. And, you know, when, when you're doing it every weekend, you know, big competitions in America all the time. You know, when you're used to it, fine. But maybe because he hasn't had the opportunity to be under this pressure and test it and test it and test it, maybe that's why we're seeing the cracks. More and more archers, though, today are favouring punching rather than uh, the, the subconscious release, as you say. Another factor of that, though, is the wind. So if it was windy right now, sometimes that is why people go across to it because you can do a bit of a flyby hit it as it's going across but lovely and still today this is going to favor the subconscious squeezers uh, who doesn't like a subconscious squeezer chris schaff up to the line for end number two Watch the thumb, see what he does in the release aid. Yep. Quick shot. Interesting, Brayton's using his little finger on the back of the release aid there, using yep. that just to hinge it round. I think you could safely say the USA have zoned in on that... Uh, Left hand target, three very good arrows grouped closely together. Yep. We talk about communication, Mickey, and it's not really very much going on. If anything, it's d Dam's bow on the Danish side that's uh, sort of the talker. Yeah, I think maybe a cultural difference as well. You know, we see America usually being flamboyant and loud and very, very talkative. Denmark probably one of the countries who are a little bit more subdued in their approach. Wow. Grouping that easily matches the USA. So back over to target number one and Chris Schaff. James Lutz, and look at his punching style technique, except we can't quite see the trigger. Yep. On the line. Bags of time here. On average, 20 seconds per archer per arrow in the end, and Galantine with 30. And little finger release. Oh, look, and now... The wind steady, but has picked up. Another chance for the Danes here to pick up another point in the lead 
over to the 18 year old well, number 20 Matthias Fullerton he has started to become a bit of a handful Slightly longer hold that time. Forward dams bow. So not quite uh, gaining the lead here. We talk about 18-year-olds uh, and, and the youngsters here. Is it something that's noticeable right now that you're getting a lot, uh, archers achieving a lot at a very young age, perhaps more so than normally? Yeah, there certainly are quite a few 17, 18, 19-year-olds coming through. And again, I think it's just really interesting with the pandemic and you know who's... Uh, done well in those times who hasn't done so well and you know for some people what's given the opportunity to train you know, extra hard you know not have any other sort of distractions and things and then seeing them come through this year so yeah I think we're seeing a few new faces crop through. Yeah it's very interesting to say that during the, the, the restrictive period we have um, not only been deprived of uh, live international full international sport um, but we have also missed out on that crop of juniors coming into the senior realms and the, and the development from the late teens into uh, the prime of an athlete's career. So it is interesting to see these youngsters coming through and Matthias Fullerton for Denmark is certainly one of those to keep an eye on. Well, we see here the score is still very close, but it is Denmark that lead by a single point, 118 to 117, and Chris Schaff we'll get and number three underway. I just think this American team is so interesting. I, all three of these archers shooting completely differently. Braden just throwing his bow stand on the floor. Um, you know, Chris Schaff, three fingers, just continuing to pull. Uh, James, as we talked about, punching. And then Braden using that, that little finger then to really rotate the release aid. So fantastic differences in the archers. You know, watch these guys, see what they're doing, because it is interesting. It's just not one size fits all. Uh, it's interesting because when you, you talk about that, you can give the, the audience at home uh, an, an opportunity to really understand what you mean by subconsciously squeezing and, and, and being a puncher, where the real difference is between those two things because it's not automatically clear to well, certainly somebody who hasn't shot a compound bow exactly what we're talking about. Yes, yeah, so it's just the way that they're making these release aids go off. So there's lots of different styles, lots of different ways of doing it, whether you've got a trigger or whether you've got like a hinge mechanism where the release aid has to kind of rotate and then it releases at a certain angle. Um, so all sorts of methods of release. This is more of a hinge technique. Wasn't happy with that, but not too much movement. But just interesting what people do differently with their hand, whether they keep their hand still throughout. Well, you can talk us through these three now. So tell us what the difference is here. Okay, so Shaft, you can't quite see a great angle here, but both uh, he drops his finger off, his thumb and finger are off, and he's just pulling. He's just pushing and pulling, and it goes off. And it just reaches a point <laughs> where the the release. The, when you talk about the release, say the. The, the the string of the bow is released and yep. that pushes the arrow so out. I think he's on a hinge, so at a certain degree of angle rotation, that will go off. Whereas James looks here, watch his thumb, he's got a trigger, and he's going to hit that trigger. There we go. And that is a conscious release. He decided, I'm going to shoot now. And that's how he got that to go. And then Braden, slightly different technique again. So I believe this is another hinge. And see that little finger off. He's getting in, he's aiming. Now he's going to put that little finger on. Can you see now the rotation of the release aid as it went off? So it's subconscious in that he is deciding to start a process, but he doesn't know exactly when it's going to go. So that's why it's still subconscious. Interesting. We've seen the three different styles and techniques there. And it is very much an individual sport. And you can see how the three Americans have got the first 
maximum here of 60, pulling them onto a 177. Bit of pressure on the Danes. They need two more tens to keep things level here. I just thinking I couldn't, couldn't think that um, Stefan Hansen could look more relaxed. <laughs> Comes off the line, he just relaxes on his bow, job done, sort of thing. He has actually looked very calm throughout. In fact, all of them have. Ham's bow not looking happy with that, and that's why these incredibly high standards, a 58 in the end for them, means that they lose their one point lead and now find themselves trailing, crucially, going into end number four. Not much communication. Dams both clearly this sort of talk a bit. Look, here's the coach now talking to the three athletes. And if anything, it's Stefan Hansen who's the one that's listening most intently. Perversely, USA. Oh, and a little cheery chin wag with each other. Jimmy Lutz, the youngest member of the team, retrieving the arrows from the agents. They will check those arrows, of course. Yeah, it's important to check the knocks. No damages from the prior end. Yeah, I think Martin Dansbury, you know, he knew that last shot. You could see him just trying to move it across. I think he knew it was aiming up in the nine. He tried to pull it over. Wasn't quite quick enough. That is a downside of the subconscious release because if you are just pulling and pushing and pushing and pulling and it floats off into the nine and it, and it breaks at that point, well, you might get a nine. But over time, it's about trying to get that um, hold even better and better. Well, the Danes have led throughout until the third end where the USA have overtaken them. Two nines in that third end for Denmark. They'll shoot first in end number four and it's time for some big scores to pile on the pressure. Nines, the last two shots really needs a ten. Over to target number one in the USA, and they can be ruthless once they found the center of the target. A perfect last time. Yep. <laughs> we talk about Hansen looking relaxed. Jamie looks uh, just a, a gentle breeze, and you think he might nod off just looks so calm and sort of laid back in the shot. Again, incredible grouping from the USA and clearly in the right place on the target as well, maintaining their one point lead. There's not much the Danes can do here other than put down another perfect 30 just to try and put some pressure on the USA. with a nine in the last end. Yep. A great grouping oh. by the Dens and a perfect score for them. A 2.36. Gettable, beatable by the USA. This is where the pressure starts kicking in. Two more tens, and the USA have gold. A nine here for Lutz. 
Rangers. The pressure will be on Gallantine, but no chance of that. But the pressure still remains high. Braden Gallantine, who else would you want to anchor your team? Needing a 10 for the win. And he's popped it into the nine. A 2.36 apiece in this amazing match. And to be fair, Denmark led for two of the ends before the USA took over in the third. So they've shared the lead equally between them. And a nine from Gallantine at the end means we are going to go to a shoot-off. Before we get into how excited, let me just tell you, you can't see Nikki, but she's extremely excited here. Uh, very happy because she does love a shoot-off. Uh, before you get overexcited about the shoot-off, can you explain to everyone how it works? <laughs> so one hour each, uh, we're going to alternate through the teams on that. And then if they score the same, if we've got a dead tie still, they're all going to put them in a 10. It's going to go to the closest to the middle. And how excited are you? I'm very excited. <laughs> I love a shoot-off. <laughs> Nikki Hunt loves a shoot-off. Former world number one. Perfect. Uh, analysis of this match we've seen a real synopsis of the uh, American uh, shooting technique what can you tell us about the Danes yeah I mean the Danes Stefan Hansen is noticing his little finger as well he's kind of squeezing through that little finger um, you know they're just the three of them I think are, are more subconscious just more relaxed in their shooting um, Braden you know with that, that little finger on the, the top of the reside you know, that can become conscious whether it did on that last shot who knows it's difficult to tell but yeah what fantastic two teams you've got here and this is going to be an absolute nail biter it really is and this seems to be a very settled USA team uh, Matthias Fulton coming into the Den Denmark team more recently and actually becoming perhaps the first name on the list and it, it goes beyond uh, these three as well I believe the coach uh, or the, the standing coach here, Lawson, that was in the quarterfinals here uh, in the uh, individual tournament. So a great squad in Denmark. They're in a shoot-off with the USA for gold. USA's first chance at gold on this year's Highland Archery World Cup Tour. In fact, the Danes' first chance of a medal as well. Three arrows to see who's going to get the compound men's team gold. Chris Schaff of the USA to shoot first. Well, I can safely say that's the closest arrow to the centre if we do have an equal score. Oh, it's only just touching the X line. Someone will get a better one than that. Someone's going to hit the spider. Hansen holding on a bit. And a bit more. A lot of time being bagged here, and that's in the nine. What was that all about? It just took too long, didn't it? Just could not get that shot executed at all. Used a lot of time. They've only got 60 seconds for these three arrows. So normally super relaxed, super calm. Hansen <gasps> throwing it into the nine, but look at that. Jimmy Lutz has done the same. Matthias Fullerton. He's put it into the ten. Chris Schaff's arrow still remains the closest to the centre. So if things were settled now, it would be the USA with the gold. One more hour each, though. Here's Galantine. And he's put it in the nine as well. Chance here for Martin Damsbo and Denmark. He needs this in the ten. If it goes into the nine, they will be level, but the USA will take it. And it has gone into the 10. It's a 29 for Denmark, beating a 28 from the USA. And the Danes are the compound men's team champion of Paris. Long hold from Stefan Hansen. We thought that was all over then, but immediately Jimmy Lutz comes out, went through the same process, released very quickly, 
uh, but he popped it into the line as well. Yeah, I think all of them are just under that much more pressure. You can see a little bit of shaking, a little bit of nerves, and all of them really on that shoot-off. You know, they all want to win it so badly, and what a, what a match that was. Well done, Denmark. Fantastic gold medal. Certainly was. Denmark there with Stefan Hansen. There he is. 18-year-old Matthias Fullerton in the middle. And certainly the captain of the team, Martin Damsbo, certainly most experienced at 36 years old. They are the champions here in Paris. There is Larson on the right hand side of your screen, the fourth member of this team. Coach extraordinaire, but also a quarter finalist in the individual.